So uh, Madden Football as an example, so for anybody who's in the business of making textbooks. Um, <laughs> Ele Electronic Arts spends about $30 million every year to make John Madden football, and it reaches six or seven uh, million primary customers per year. So it's kind of get good reach, but great production values. That's the, that's the sizzle. Um, now I want to talk about the stake a little bit. So Electronic Arts and its founding business plan in 1982, John Dewey was cited in the second paragraph as uh, learning, learning by doing. And what I've found is the great game designers all understand this learning by doing. So Will Wright, who's working on Spore right now, has a bookshelf full of evolutionary biology books and cosmology books to make sure that gets baked in. Next slide. So John Dewey, one great quote, we learn to think as we connect that what we do with the consequences as we connect, what we do with the consequences that follow from our doing. Somebody mentioned earlier that you learn when, um, uh, when you're faced with a problem. So Dewey is all about useful problems that drive learning. <laughs> and what? Next slide. And even uh, somebody talked about pulling up the Stella in the bathtub. So Dewey even did this with uh, his Why Boats Float experiment, which seemed pretty cool. I mean, any, any chance to kind of get wet or dirty while you're learning seems to unlock new possibilities for kids. <laughs> Next slide. And of course, uh, John Madden's famous quote, that wasn't a boom, that was more like a whack. Next. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, to, th to think back, what are, what are the goals that somebody ought to learn in math, not including drill and practice, which I think is a total waste of time, except I've found that when you want to test somebody's math, you give them a series of uh, mathematical um, uh, problems, and any time you, you go quick, you're like, okay, four, 4 plus 2 times 2 times 10, and you get to a point where you go 37 times 3, it stops everybody. So that's the way to beat somebody in a speed math game, 37 times 3. So uh, how do you get kids to get quantity and arithmetic, algebra and algorithms, probability and statistics, economics and resource management? Um, the, this math is baked into any video game that your kids like. Next. So um, I know a few economists. Um, I'm reading Alan Greenspan. I know Michael Boskin. That's Rick Levin of Yale. Um, pretty noteworthy economists. Two of them ran the... Uh, uh, Council Economic Advisors for Presidents, and the third one has an even more important job. They all grew up uh, falling in love with math through baseball cards. In the, TV, in the Leave it to Beaver generation, it was the only accessible math to kids was baseball cards. Um, life has changed. Next, please. So, so for football fans, for example, like our photographer who left after I came on and the big wigs left, um, you know, they grow up, they grow up um, um, trying to solve the math of math next. So here is, I'm going to give you really quick, I, can, I got a whole hour about the math of Madden football. Um, but we started with John Madden trying to uh, uh, pull from him what's the math. Next slide. So uh, the first thing is he wrote a few books, which is always good <laughs> if you want to try to model somebody's, um, uh, somebody's decision of science as if they read a book. I've written a book, but uh, uh, Madden, it turns out, is half shill, half deep football expert. Here's his deep football expert. And out of this, this was so inspiring, it caused our development team to work twice as long as they normally would to try to live up to him. It says, uh, Vince Lombardi was my idol. It's as pure as simple as that. Vince Lombardi was a 60s coaching football god at Green Bay. When I was a junior college coach, I went to a football clinic in Reno where he, where he was speaking. I thought I knew everything about coaching by then. I went to hear Lombardi, Lombardi give a simple lecture on the Green Bay sweep. I thought he would talk for 30 to 40 minutes. That day, Lombardi spoke for eight hours on one football play. That's when I realized my knowledge of coaching was superficial. <laughs> depth, depth over breadth. And Madden is a great role model here next. So here's some of the math of a football simulation. So first of all, you should know there are NFL averages. These are the team averages, 34 attempts per game, 3% interception rate if you read blindside. It even talks about how uh, Bill Walsh changed the interception rate with the West Coast offense. Next slide. So Madden breaks down. He has algorithms about field position, 0 to 5, 5 to 20, 20 to 20, 20 to 5, 5 all the way in. And he changes uh, the variable of uh, the likelihood of calling various plays in those five positions. So he runs 80% of the time from within his own five yard and changes the variables on formation calling. 
So this is, this is able to algorithmicize. That's a word, right, Tracy? Next slide. Um, and then players. So um, any of you have read Moneyball, um, you understand that there are Bill James fans, sabermetricians. There's um, um, deep, wonderful math about baseball, none in football. And so we tried to take the available statistics, add some statistics, to try to figure out what the um, uh, ratings on a 1 to 10 scale that could be looked at in the game at every clock cycle of the game um, to affect behavior. And we knew this worked. When uh, John Madden, when we started working with John Madden, he was no longer a coach. 15-year-olds only knew him as an Ace Hardware spokesperson. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, Madden was just kind of uh, taking the dough from us. Um, and then he went to a pregame practice. All the, the TV announcers, they go to the last walkthrough practice for the games. They remember who the guys are and who the numbers are. And he had one, uh, one young kid, wide receiver, come up and go, Coach, new game came out. You hosed me. I'm way faster than 87. Did you see me last? And that's when Madden uh, that okay, you guys, this is important. Okay, next. <laughs> So I'll give you really quickly. So the game breaks down into a lot of simulation that runs second by second. So I love to bring um, um, youngsters through electronic arts, and I tell them, oh, you like video games? Math, literature, movies. Math, literature, movies. Math, literature, movies. Math, literature. And they go, oh. And they say, well, there's math and video games. I say, oh, yes, there's math and video games. Next slide. So um, here are the ratings for Dominic Rhodes, uh, Super Bowl runner for two years ago. So his overall rating is an 84 because he got over 1,000 yards. That's pretty good, 4.3 average. Now the question is, what made up the 4.3 average? So he had pretty good speed, a 4.41 and a 40-yard dash. 4.2 is a lot faster. He had pretty good agility. He could uh, shuck and drive on moves. His awareness is lower. So he actually, over the last uh, 15 years on Madden football, changed the awareness algorithm about every five years. But awareness has to do with uh, field sense. Um, his breaking tackles is pretty low. Strength 80, that means he can go up against a, a big guy and do a little better. Next slide. And when he comes one on with Brian Erlocker, who's overall 98, also an all pro, with really good speed for a linebacker, great strength, great field awareness, which all the, all the great linebackers have, and a great tackle. Next slide. And uh, here's, what it, here's what it comes to. The first thing that happens when the game sees that, that there's a one-on-one -on -one tackling occurrence, um, within tackling distance, on average, 15% of the time, the runner is going to totally elude. It's a whiff. And, but the whiff is adjusted by the agility of the runner and the awareness of the runner uh, minus the combined speed and tackling of the tackler. Next slide. And so there's no whiff. Now there's a collision. Here's what happened. About 15% of the time, the tackle's broken. It's twice as often in the backfield. And again, that's then modified by a, an adjustment between the two player ratings. Next slide. And then a tackle is made. So 70% of the time when there's a tackling occurrence, tackle's made. And uh, on the average NFL running back in a one-on-one -on -one cir circumstance gets 3.5 yards after first contact. And that's adjusted by strength versus strength. Um, and of course, by the angle, which gets really complicated. Next slide. So if these two run into each other, guess what? Dominic Rhodes will never elude Brian Urlacher, so we had to watch game films to make sure that worked. He hardly ever break a tackle. You get a little more than average yardage after contact, but that's only when they're squared up. So if it's coming at angles, it changes the math. But um, that's simple algebra. Um, but yeah, it's actually a science project then to run the simple algebra, then go get data from the simulation and find out if it actually works. Next slide. So on tackling, there's all sorts of other effects for the person playing the game. Did you do a stiff arm? Do you sprint? Uh, because, of course, player skill matters. Otherwise, they wouldn't play it next. And here's the stiff arm effect. And this is not linear. So it's actually a little complicated in algebra when you, don't, uh, when, when you have nonlinear effects. Um, and you actually get to a nonlinear effect through um, empirical trial and error, which sounds like a science project. Next slide.